Have we ever, for 50 whole years, we have enjoyed every note, every effect. The album has been remastered and re-released, and guess what? No surprise, I suppose it's climbing up the charts again. Sgt. Pepper called perhaps the best album of all time, certainly one of the most influential. The title, inspired by hippie groups of the late 1960s, they were coming up with crazy names, so they thought they'd go for Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. But what you may not know is that there is a huge Canadian connection to that Sgt. Pepper, a connection to the Ontario Provincial Police that goes beyond the patch that you see on Paul's arm on the album cover. That's a story that takes us to London, Ontario this morning, and our next guest, Cheryl Finn, whom I'm delighted to speak to today. Hello, Cheryl. Happy anniversary. Oh, thank you, Heather. <laughs> tell, I'm going to let you tell the story. What's your connection to Sgt. Pepper Lonely Hearts Club band, Cheryl? Well, this one is very close to my heart. Sgt. Pepper is actually my grandfather. You are the grandfather of Sgt. Pepper. I'm the granddaughter. Gra yes, I am. Yeah, grand. Sorry, of course. <laughs> I'm just so flummoxed because I'm actually exciting to you. Because a lot of people thought that maybe Sergeant Pepper was an alter ego, maybe of Paul. Not so. Sergeant Pepper was your grandfather. Tell me about his connection to the Beatles. Certainly. Well, um, my grandfather was a sergeant in the OPP and stationed in the Toronto area. Uh, at the time that the Beatles were coming to do their Canadian tour. And he was asked to head the security team on, on land, uh, on site for their visit. So he took that very, very seriously, even though he thought the Beatles were ruffians and hooligans. <laughs> and of course, in the 1960s, young men were supposed to have nice, clean-shaven hair. And uh, there was a, a real kind of relationship that was struck between them that uh, I think went on to be recognized through Sgt. Pepper and the naming of the album. Because that was three years after the fact the album came out, three years after he'd made the connection with your grandfather, he must have uh, remembered. I mean, did they keep in touch or anything like that? Uh, I, I've never heard that. No. I don't think they became best friends <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination, but I do think there was a mutual respect there for sure. It's so interesting. So there is grandfather Randall Pepper. He was the sergeant who became Sergeant Pepper in the Lonely Hearts Club band. Now, here's a question because here's one of the mysteries. Paul, of course, with that OPP patch, did that belong to your grandfather? Did he give him the patch? No, and in fact, that's kind of the family mystery right now. He actually got into a lot of trouble from his supervisors because they thought he had given him the patch. Um, but in fact, that's kind of the mystery is where did that patch come from? Huh. Uh, um, I've heard some report that uh, a police Police officer actually gave it to him uh, when they were leaving Canada at the airport. But either way, there it is up on the shoulder, uh, OPP nod, so there's another connection. But Sergeant Pepper, it's kind of fun. What did he think about this? You said he thought they were sort of ruffians and hooligans because of their wild hair at the time. But when the album came out, and there it was, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, what did he think? Well, he didn't think too much. Of course, my mother and my uncle thought it was fantastic, but <laughs> my grandmother and my grandfather just kind of poo-pooed it and just thought it was it was kind of silly. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's hilarious. Now, what about you? Did you grow up with this as the big family story, or how did you find out that your grandfather was the Sergeant Pepper? Well, it's so funny because I was actually in my grade nine English class at Elliott Lake Secondary School. Shout out to Elliott Lake today. Um, and my grade nine English teacher actually mentioned it in class. So I ran home at lunch and I said to my mother, like, what? What are you saying? What's happening? And she said, oh, yes, you know, that's our family claim to claim to fame. And I thought... Well, that's a great party story and great icebreaker. And um, 
I'm I'm kind of ashamed to say it actually did get me out of a few speeding tickets on my way home up north a few times. Are you serious? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, it would, I bet. Uh, listen, what do you make of the fact that, um, I mean, you grew up with this, but here we are 50 years on, and we're still talking about the album, and we're still talking about your grandfather. You lost him many years ago, but we're bringing him back as part of the story today. How does that feel to you and the family? It feels wonderful. It's, a, it's a kind of a cool family legacy, and it's wonderful to hear our family name in the news today. Thank you, Cheryl Finn in London.